Excellent. What's up, everybody, and welcome to Probing Paul, episode number four. This is my monthly Q&A series I do every month towards the end of the month. So for April, these are the questions that you asked and my answers to them. True to form, this is the uh, history of Probing Paul, going all the way back to episode one, as well as the inception of the name of the title, which uh, came from Kyle. Bless his heart. Let's jump into it with question number one, though. This is from Sid from uh, last month's video, and he asks, how do you earn a living doing this? And I have to assume that he's asking about how do I earn a living making YouTube videos? That's that's what I do, full-time job. Um, the answer is three primary ways. I have three main sources of income. One is directly from YouTube. That's with the ads that get served up at the beginning of the videos as they are monetized. If you guys see an ad, then I get a few cents. I don't know how much I get when you guys watch an ad, but it's a little bit. Uh, YouTube Red falls into that category as well. If you subscribe to YouTube Red and you watch my videos, then I get a little cut of that. So that's kind of the, the main source of income. Secondary source, but also very important that I probably couldn't get, get by without would be Amazon affiliates as well as other affiliate sites that are out there. So if you click on one of my Amazon links and you go to Amazon and then you buy something, Amazon credits me as having directed the traffic over there. And as a thank you to me, they give me a little cut depending on what you bought. The cut can be bigger or smaller, that kind of thing. Uh, there's a third primary way, and I've actually been doing that less this year which is for me to actually sell ads that I personally put within the videos. Uh, for that, I'll work with vendors. I've worked with like Gigabyte and Fractal and, and Cooler Master before. And that's just direct sponsorship for me, which is a good way to do it. And I try to keep those short and, and, and straightforward and at the beginning of the videos and get them out of the way quick. So you guys can, you know, spot a product if you're interested, but then move on and get to the video if that's what you're interested in. Uh, anyway, that's that's pretty much how I make my money. Um, it's definitely not something that you could do easily starting out with a brand new channel, but more on that with the next question. Did I did I put these in the right order? I think I kind of did. All right, from Phantasm Gaming, a uh, two-part question, which is what advice do you have a content for a content creator who wants to get into tech reviews and doing PC builds? So the questions this month uh, had a lot to do, not necessarily with the tech directly, but with how to do YouTube tech stuff, so, you know, uh, I, I'm answering them. Anyway, what advice for a content creator who wants to get into doing what I do, tech reviews and PC builds? Secondary question is, how do you get companies to send you products to put in builds and reviews? Both are very good questions. Uh, the first advice I would give you is not to attempt to start a brand new channel right now, especially in tech, and expect to immediately, or even in the near future, make about a lot of money off of it, or make that your full-time job. I find that um, the mentality that you go forward with with something like this is very, very important. And just staying positive all the time is like the primary thing. So if you say, all right, I'm gonna start a YouTube channel and it's gonna be my job, that's what I'm gonna do. No matter how passionate you are, no matter how, many, how good your videos are out of the gates, there's a, a long lead up time. I've been doing this for eight or nine years now. My channel's less than that, four or five years, but I did Newegg TV before this, so I already had uh, a bit of a following, some people who knew who I was, and that really helped me get going. Also, there's just a lot more people making this type of content now, so it's a little bit harder to get recognized. That said, my, big, my biggest and I think the most important piece of advice is do it because you enjoy it, do it because you love it, and don't do it with the expectation that it's gonna make you money. Second question, which is how do you get vendors or companies to send products to you? That is a tricky one. Um, the main thing to do is to have lots of subscribers and many viewers, but since chances are you don't necessarily have that right out of the gate, there are a few other ways to go about it. Uh, you can sign up for something like the Amazon um, Vine program that gives you you know, free samples that you can use. Sometimes you keep them, sometimes you send them back. That's a great way to do it. Uh, try to find companies that are looking for smaller creators that they wanna seed products to. A lot of companies have kind of a, a, an A list of the reviewers that they like to work with and they'll send them products all the time and it'll be harder, hard to kind of break into that inner circle of who they work with. But there are companies who actively want new and fresh faces looking at the products, so like, um, I know AMD RTP is just uh, one that comes to my mind, Red Team Plus, and they work with a lot of content creators and, and, and um, people who do reviews who, you know, they have websites, they have YouTube channels, but, you know, they don't have huge followings. And AMD wanted to work with people who uh, were, were, were maybe a little bit less experienced, a little fresher, maybe a fresh perspective, I guess, would be the best way to put that. The other thing I would suggest is just as far as getting products would be not to 
rely too heavily on getting them directly from a manufacturer. Seriously consider something like the Vine program that I already mentioned. There's other retailers that have, uh, I think Newegg has a program that's similar like that, uh, Egg Expert. One last thing would be to consider buying products and returning them as long as the company you're buying it from has a return policy. Sometimes you'll be stuck with a 15% restocking fee, but then you'll have a product to do a video on versus not having a product to do a video on. And that's where I would go with that. Actually, one last suggestion. Try to find a local, a local like CP repair or hard, a local computer repair shop, and see if you can work with them and you know get products to borrow or something like that. There's lots of different ways to go about it, but yeah, definitely having this something to do a video on is very important. So stick with that. All right, here's uh, not a question, but I included it anyway. This is from Siddharth Sharma. And he says, I really like your channel. Your videos are very thorough and critical about stuff, and I think you're very honest in giving reviews about the products. And thanks for making them and keep them coming. I included this to make myself feel better, because, you know, everyone can use a pick-me-up from time to time. But also kind of a follow-up to the, the previous two questions when it comes to making videos on YouTube, making tech videos. And I, like, the way I make videos is to hopefully get responses like this. I guess that's, that's what I'm trying to say. I like that that Siddharth was so complimentary, of course, you know, you can never argue with that, but he likes that I was cr critical and thorough, and those are the things that I try to do in my videos to, you know, hopefully make them stand out from something that's just, you know, maybe a little not as in-depth. I like to take the product, use it as much as I can, you know, do, do, do everything I can to use it in different ways and give you guys my real and honest opinion. So uh, I guess going back to the previous questions, that's another thing that maybe you could focus on is, you know, try to be honest, try to be upfront, and uh, don't try to, like, I never try to be overly showy about anything or, or, or get really excited, like, oh, this is awesome, because I'm bad at getting excited anyway, but um, all right. Enough for that. Let's move on to... Probably the techiest question that I have for today's episode. This is from Flippin' Fred. He says, okay, so Paul, why haven't you done any reviews on any Fantex cases? I'm sure you're going to say because Kyle is taking care of those, but I was trying to see if you had comments of your own on them. Uh, let me know your take. All right, Fantex cases I like. Uh, and though I have not done what I would call directly a review on one, I have done a build in one, the Fantex N2 Pro. I've actually done two builds in it now because I took the first build out of it and I did this build in it. Um, which is behind me that I did for the MSI uh, x and Godlike Gaming motherboard review. Um, I really like Fantex cases. They do a crap ton of accessories in them. I like the design and the style of a lot of them. The look feels, you know, it's a good look without feeling like it's ripped off from somebody else or like it's too just, you know, like a box that's sitting there or that kind of thing. Um, I will say that um, having worked with lots of different cases before, I can sometimes see where Fantex cuts their costs um, when it comes to certain things like, you know, how thick the steel is that uh, you use in a case. A manufacturer, by making that, you know, just just ever so slightly thinner, can save a bunch of money over the entire run of cases that they produce. Um, it seems to me like the Fantex cases, while they have are very rich on features, the build quality is not always there, especially when you compare it to something like the Cooler Master cases, which are built like tanks most of the time. Um, I will actually give you a, a working example right now, if you can hear this. You guys hear that? Okay. If you can't tell, that's the side panel. And the side panel's on, and it's got a thumb screw in it in the back, but it still rattles. It doesn't sit flush. And, you know, it's not the end of the world. When the case is just sitting there, it's no big deal. A lot of people can deal with, you know, slightly thinner gauge steel and everything, and I do not by any means mean to say don't buy uh, Fantex cases. I just wanted to point out, in my experience working with them, since you ask, uh, that's the sort of trade-off you get. Tons of features, but maybe not the uh, top tier build quality, but still very well made and uh, still very viable cases, and I've recommend them, recommended them many times before. But yeah, Kyle's done more review on them, reviews on them than I have. Must be rolling in that Fantex money. Okay, uh, next question. Apparently my keyboard has stopped working. Next question is from William Building 55 Burgoon. He says, can someone please tell me how he switches between the computer screen and the camera? And I will actually show you that right now, William, um, because I'm using OBS, and although I gotta shrink the screen down. Look, there's OBS right there in the middle. It's capturing, you can see what I'm doing, and I've set it up with uh, shortcut keys, so I can hit two F keys and jump back and forth between them. Of course, ideally I don't have OBS visible on the screen that I'm capturing and okay now that I've moved it off I can show you one other thing that I like to do with it 
um, now that I have the capability, which is uh, I use another capture card. So right now my camera is capturing straight to the computer via Blackmagic Intensity Pro card. I've also got this Elgato, Elgato Game Capture HD60, which is an external card. So this I can connect up to, say, a little computer. You can't see this computer. There's a little computer right here. And uh, I did this when I was uh, benchmarking this system. So I could be running benchmarks on the, on the system, passing that through this capture and then to the monitor where I can see it. This is capturing over to the system, my capture system. And then I can capture exactly what I'm doing while I'm running benchmarks without affecting the performance of the system that I'm benchmarking at all. I was able to use this method to show you like um, uh, 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 MSI combustor running at the same time as a full CPU load test and show you real time um, temperatures and reporting on the screen and that kind of thing, which I would not be comfortable doing and saying, here's the results if I was also capturing straight from the system. So I find that to be quite handy. And yeah, OBS is great software. I'm not even using the, uh, there's a new version that has like a fancier UI that's supposed to be easier to work with, but I haven't even tried it yet, but really like OBS. I use XSplit too. Here's another kind of production-oriented question from Gentis, Gentis Toei123. Uh, what lens, though? This is a follow-up to uh, when I was talking last month about my camera, which I use a GH4, and I just got a second GH4. He's asking, what lens do I use? Uh, 1235 2.8 is so expensive, and that's, that's what I have right here. Uh, also thinking about 25mm 1.7, but primes are harder to work with. He's doing video. Could I share what kind of lenses I use? Um, I understand your pain considering prime lenses. Prime lenses, they, they, you can't adjust the, the focal length, so you can't zoom in or out basically. You get a fixed thing and that means that in order to get closer or further away you have to move the entire camera. And if the camera's on a tripod and you're shooting video, well that can be kind of a pain in the ass. So here's the lenses I use uh, and also please bear in mind that I have a second GH4. So I got this GH4, another GH4, I have the GH4 that I'm using right now. GH4 that I'm using right now is using a Canon EF lens. That's the lens that I got for my uh, 5D Mark II back when I first started doing YouTube channels, or, or my own YouTube channel. Uh, I really like that lens. It's an L series, 17 to 40 millimeter, uh, so it's wide angle, uh, F4, I think is, is as fast as, the lens, as it gets. Um, so I really like that lens and I decided I wanted to keep using it even though I have sold my 5D Mark II. So for that lens, I have a, uh, Panasonic or a micro four-thirds mount to EF mount adapter. It's uh, made by by Metabones. It's an active adapter, but it's not a speed booster. Um, they do have a speed booster for it as well, but I, it's like 200 bucks more, so I didn't get that. Anyway, so that's the lens that you're viewing me through right now. I also have this, which is the uh, aforementioned fairly expensive 12 to 35 uh, Panasonic lens that's made specifically for the Micro Four Thirds mount and the GH4. Other lenses that I got, um, because I do like having other lenses, this is a macro lens. I got this uh, still when I was using my Canon uh, camera. This is made by Tamron, and this basically has the mixture of, of features in that it is an EF mount lens. It is a macro lens, which is made for focusing really, really close in on things like that. That would be a good thing to get a, use a macro lens for. And I wanted super close-ups of, you know, parts of motherboards or, you know, keyboard switches or that kind of thing. So I, I needed the F, EF mount, uh, and I needed it to not be terribly expensive. So this does a good job for me. It's also kind of funny when you, you go all the way, it, it extends quite a bit. It's a grower, not a shower. Anyway, that's my, uh, that's my, uh, Macro lens for getting extreme close-ups. And this is my brand new lens that I literally have not even used yet. I have used this lens, but not personally. Uh, I got this because it is the YouTuber lens. This is a extremely an extremely popular configuration for YouTubers. So if you want to do YouTube and you want to do 4K and you have somewhere in the $2,000 range to spend on a camera and a lens solution, I highly recommend going for this. Um, and you know what? I didn't even bring the adapter. All right, this requires a Metabones adapter, the Metabones Speed Booster, um, and this is a different lens mount than EF. So I'm actually rocking three different types of lenses when it comes to the mount, which isn't that great. But uh, this being the YouTuber lens and me having seen many people use it, and um, also reading some articles on it recently that explained all the all the reasons why this lens works so well, particularly in conjunction with the Metabones Speed Booster and the Lumix GH4 because the the way that the just the light coming through the speed booster hits the sensor 
uh, it hits it at a really ideal point. So you don't, it doesn't crop as much, even as the standard lenses, and it turns out really nice. This goes to f1.8, uh, and I believe with the speed booster, it gets down to like f1.2. Uh, this, this is the Sigma 18 to 35 Pro Art lens, and it's really nice. This was about, this goes for 800. I got it for about 650 bucks on eBay because I think it's an international version. And I don't know if my US warranty will work with it, but hey, uh, you know, 150 bucks off, right? For sure, it, I'm sure it will be fine. A couple more quick questions. This one's from Zihao Yu. Zihao Yu, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing your name wrong. Uh, what kind of desk are you using in most of your videos? Is it a DIY solution? Uh, it is a IKEA Hamarp countertop. Uh, birch is the finish. There are three of them. They're the eight foot long versions, and yes, it's kind of DIY. Uh, look at my garage work log series, and you can see when I installed all of these, I'm using the IKEA table legs that you can just buy, and I installed them in various places to give it both support and allow me to scoot in to the desk when I needed to and sit down comfortably and everything. Uh, do you often search for things that are directly in front of you? Says, asks Vipertail78. Yes, yes I do, actually constantly. It's really sad sometimes. Getting down to the end, Max Patera asks uh, a very nice question. Yo, Paul, I work at Hinterland Brewery in Green Bay. What up, what up, Green Bay? Wisconsin. Uh, hypothetically, if uh, I were to send you some beer to try, would you and Kyle drink it on Awesome Hardware? Uh, I would say, Max, yes. I'd be happy to drink your beer on Awesome Hardware. I'd be more than happy. In fact, here's my P.O. Box. Paul's Hardware, P.O. Box 4325, and you can ship me stuff there. Um, if you are going to ship me anything that is edible, I would prefer that it was sealed, just for anyone who has any ideas out there, but, you know, gotta be safe and everything since I'm publishing a P.O. box, a, sh a shipping address on the web. But yeah, we already got some fudge uh, that came all the way from Devon in the UK, and it was absolutely delicious, so I'd be happy to taste some Wisconsin beer as well. That would be amazing. Um, but guys, that is all for uh, Probing Paul this week, no, this month. I uh, hope you have enjoyed it. I know I rambled a bit, but you know, ask me questions and I just start talking. Uh, stay tuned for another video coming up this weekend. Actually, a garage work log is what I have in store for you. If you hadn't noticed, there's new and colorful lights going on behind me. Uh, I, I've managed to do lighting along this top row here and the bottom row. And I, I also painted. I did painting underneath there and other manual labor things, and I did a garage work log out of that. So stay tuned for that. Uh, hit the thumbs up button on this video if you enjoyed it. Leave me comments in the comment section below, because that is generally where I've been going to grab the questions for next month. And uh, if you want to buy stuff and help support my cause... Oh, you know what? I totally forgot to even say that when I was talking about ways I make money on YouTube. That's the other way I make money on YouTube, is merchandising. So if you want to help me out with the merchandising, I have mugs, pint glasses, as well as shirts on uh, store.paulshardware.net. You can buy them there, get yourself some swag, and then you will also help me, you know, eat food and pay the mortgage and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching again, guys. We'll see you next time.